I started in this fight in 1994 uh, with a, uh, a uh, whistleblower suit. And one of my alleged charges was the fact that my workplace had in fact impacted my health. I joined in with a group of workers known at that time as the Exposed, that, that's the uh, pre-group for the Coalition for Health and Environment, and uh, we started an active campaign. When we started out with this uh, program, we were considered to be nuts. Well, thanks to uh, Janet and uh, uh, Janine and uh, Sylvia Dodson and Vicki Hatfield and folks like that who helped us dig into these problems, we were able to come up with a substantial evidence base that brought it from fiction and uh, us being mentally impaired to fact. However, this program is still at a point to where on the management level with the Department of Energy, with the Department of Labor, it's still autocratic. It's still too complicated for sick people to have to deal with. These men and women known as our Cold War veterans unknowingly fell victim to a host of diseases and cancers that killed or sickened them, leaving their families behind in emotional and financial devastation. In 1999, Secretary Richardson and other congressional leaders made a historical apology to our nation's nuclear weapons workers and their families, and they made us a promise to pass a compensation law which was enacted in October of 2000 to provide monetary and medical benefits to those affected by these exposures. Today, seven years later, we are still trying to get compensation paid to these deserving families. Working for Y-12 and K-25 and uh, I, I, you know, I've signed up for the sick workers. I have uh, bilateral men-years disease plus, you know, heavy metals and, and things like that. And I'm getting, you know, the, the bureaucracy needs to stop. You know, they need to start giving people the uh, money that has been allotted. Well, we started as a little group called The Exposed in late 95 and early 96, and then we changed our name to Coalition for a Healthy Environment. What's your name? Well, I have uh, four heavy metals in me, and I had cyanide poisoning, and now I have five autoimmune conditions. I'll bet every one of you can tell a similar horror story about delay, denial, lost files, poor attitudes, and bureaucratic nightmares, and more. It's been four years since Congress last passed reform legislation for this law as the Department of Labor and NIOSH were remiss, and that's putting it kindly in interpreting and implementing this law. Since then, sick and dying workers and grieving and struggling families have watched and waited and buried their loved ones and often just given up over another four long years. We must change the law to allow the claims to move ahead even when records are incomplete. I was diagnosed in 93 with chronic beryllium disease and have had quite a time with it. It's been a struggle. It's not necessarily whether you live or die, it's your quality of life. And, and um, I was with Harry and Janine and and a lot of the others from the beginning, when we lobbied Washington to try to get the, the comp bill in place, it was a real effort that went into it, and we want to see it work right. Um, I, I looked up some statistics last night, and in, um, of the, the claims filed as of this week in Oak Ridge, 41,869 claims have been filed. There have been payments to 13,045. That's 31 percent. 
But I worked a lot, 12 for 33 and a half years in the maintenance division. And I have a, I have a muscle disease called sporadic inclusion body and okay, myositis. Okay. Okay, wait a minute. And the Department of Labor says that my job did not cause that. My father worked at Oak Ridge at K-25 for 41 years during the Cold War. Shortly after he retired, he died of metastatic lung cancer with thoracic and lumbar, lumbar spine, pelvic mets, and cancer of the GI tract and pancreas. There's no doubt his many years of exposure to the unsafe toxins, chemicals, metals, and hazardous vapor, vapors took his life way too soon. I worked at K-25 for 34 years and I look around and see a bunch of people that was here, a lot of them, and probably I'd give medical attention to some of them at one point or another. I worked in the fire department. We worked under adverse conditions. We went into every place the dirtiest, the filthiest, the nastiest places you can think of, waded up to our knees in, in whatever it was in the places. We drained low points and sprinkler systems and everything. They gave me a disability tent 50, uh, about 15 years ago, I guess, for rheumatoid arthritis. The doctor still won't say for sure that my leukemia was caused from, uh, you know, uh, instead of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. I was fortunate enough with Janine and and Janet and Harry and Sally and a bunch of guys or other people. Uh, Glenn went to Washington and we were one of the first groups that fought for this compensation package. You never believe we had people that was in wheelchairs and just barely could make it. Um, what we we could go down the hallway and somehow know the senators and the congressmen and the governors, if they knew we were there, they would run from us. They would actually run in and lock the doors and hide. Can you believe that somebody would do that? My father uh, worked at all three plants. He retired in 1985. He had two good years while before he, right after he retired. And then he started getting sick and we started running to the hospital. We would go to Florida to the Mayo's Clinic. We would go to Vanderbilt. We would go to UT to no avail. No one could tell us what was wrong, but we could see him going downhill. And then we, we kind of labored off and thought, well, maybe there's nothing wrong. We don't know. But he couldn't walk across the floor. And he was like 6'2", never sick a day in his life. And he couldn't even walk. He couldn't get out of bed. So we finally found out one day that he had heavy metals in his body. That was a lot of the pain in his stomach. Well, we thought, okay, maybe we can fix that. Well, we couldn't. Then we found out he had asbestosis. Well, we sure couldn't fix that one. Then we found out there was a possibility that he had borreliosis, but he was too sick and we couldn't do the test because they said he wouldn't survive it. Well, not too long after that, my dad's asbestosis turned into lung cancer. That qualified us for all the benefits that we've been working for. We didn't really want the benefits that way, but that's what qualifies us. So my mom got asbestosis and she passed away. During this period of time, my family lost not only our parents, we lost a farm that meant everything to us. It was because we couldn't keep it. We had to keep my daddy in medicine. We had to give him some sort of quality of life. Father, I just ask that you just burden our congressmen and senators. Father, it's in their hands. They need to understand. They need to see these people that are struggling, that are dying, that are just suffering, Father. Burden these people.